What I'm really looking forward to doing with this dish is spending all of Bon Appetit's money in one sandwich. <laughs> What up, what up, it's your boy Chef Harold, AKA Uncle Harold, and today we are dishing out caviar morphin' time. Even though caviar is regularly eaten all over the world, it's still something a lot of people haven't tried. It's super crazy expensive, and it's usually associated with fine dining cuisine. And on top of that, the thought of eating fish eggs is not everybody's thing. Today, I'm coming up with a dish that uses caviar in a way that's never been done before and hopefully helps people see it in a new way. This is caviar. I think most chefs, when they approach creating a dish with caviar, it really is a component that should heighten the dish. It costs so much, and it also has such a bold flavor profile that the caviar should be the star of the dish. I'm very afraid to do something new with caviar because I feel like it's such a pure item, it's such a pure product. It's really kind of a, a code, you know, like this is caviar, you use it this way and it's been used this way for over hundreds of years. But also, I want to show somewhat of a new take on what caviar dishes should look like. To help me figure out exactly what I should make, I decided to go talk with someone who knows a lot more about caviar than I do. What's up, everybody? We're here at Russ and Daughters Cafe with Nikki Russ Fetterman. And Nikki, can you please tell us about caviar and tell us about Russ and Daughters? Sure. So Russ and Daughters has been in my family for 107 years, mm -hmm. and we're New York City's premier appetizing shop. So we specialize in classic Jewish New York food. So think bagels, smoked fish, right. herring, babka, and then, of course, caviar. Can you just tell us exactly what caviar is? So caviar is the roe from a sturgeon fish. Only sturgeon Only fish. sturgeon. If people take liberties, so you'll see people say like salmon caviar or seaweed caviar now, but truly caviar is just from a sturgeon. There are different species of sturgeon, and this is one of them. So this is the transmontanus species. Oh. Look at that. Shit. <laughs> Hell. Look at that thing. And how much would this tin cost? This costs probably over $3,000. Why exactly is caviar so expensive? Well, a couple of reasons. It takes a really long time for the sturgeon to reproduce. Sure. Anywhere from seven years up till to 16 years. So it's an investment. It's an investment. And then only half the population, obviously, you know, the female fish produce the roe. Right. So it's a real investment. It's very perishable. Obviously, it has to be handled with so much care and it's now, you know, you have to harvest it all over the world. So when people think about caviar, they think it was about a high-end fine dining situation. Do you think it's a fine dining item? It is, but it doesn't have to be. Right. People sort of envision like the Russian czars mm -hmm. eating it, you know, and that's part of the mystique. You can have a wonderful caviar experience at home that doesn't have to break the bank. So I'm creating a brand new dish with caviar. What specialty or what kind of uh, flavor profiles am I looking for mm -hmm. when I'm putting a dish together? Why don't we break open some tins and then we can taste and talk as we go. So Harold, I picked out three caviars that I think are gonna show you the range in flavor profiles, texture, as well as color. So the first one we're gonna try is paddlefish. It's still wild and it's in the Mississippi River Basin. Mm. Look at that beauty. You're just gonna wanna take some, not too much, and you put it right here in kind of the nook of your hand. Yep. Nothing's gonna stand in our way between tasting what's happening here. That is nice. It's nice. Mm -hmm. it's, it's fresh. Mm. The beads are a little softer, but mm -hmm. they kind of, you know, move around nicely on and the palate. And what's the rule? You're supposed to knock them on the top of your tongue, correct? You can knock them on the top of your tongue. Some beads are firmer, they roll, they separate mm -hmm. more. Some just kind of like melt in a nice way. This is kind of a melty one. What else flavor-wise, right? It's a little more intense. There's a little minerality mm -hmm. going on. So if you're looking for acidity and saltiness, that's gonna be prominent. Yeah. So what gives a paddlefish its flavor profile? Well, it's sort of like wine, right, and terroir. Mm -hmm. These fish are from the Mississippi River Basin, so the foods they're eating, the water quality, you know, the minerality, all of that goes into the row. 
the flavor of the paddlefish stands up really well if you're using it, you know, with other ingredients. We're gonna taste one of my favorite ways mm. to have it, which is actually on a potato latke. A little bread of creme fraiche. Okay. You know, with something like latke, pack on the caviar because Oof. there's a there's a lot going on here. Mmm. This is fun because the texture of the, the potato, uh, the saltiness of the caviar really blends well. The potato itself also is seasoned very well. And the creme fraiche is just there for a, a, a cooling cooling aspect, a creamy aspect, but mm -hmm. psh, can't go wrong with this pair mm. of So the next one is, this came act actually from that OT that we opened up. Mm, the Maximus Pontepinus. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> the Transmontanus. <laughs> Nice. Do you see how the color is different mm -hmm. here? The beads are firmer too. The species, transmontanus, these are bigger fish mm -hmm. than the paddlefish. Right. So you're gonna get bigger beads, a little bit more fattiness. Wow. This is a mother of pearl spoon. It's a natural material. What you don't want with caviar is this. You don't wanna have metallic touching the caviar because it will impart that metallic flavor. Mm. Oh. Mm. Oh man. Oh, that's different. Right. Right in the front. Yeah. It just wakes you up. And then the salinity stays a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then the freshness comes to at the end. I love that. Right. So would you pair this with the same things you would pair paddlefish with? My favorite way to have it is buckwheat blinis, mm. creme fraiche, and the caviar. No. Oh, yeah. You don't hold back. No. No. It's I money. was being a little too precious. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. It kind of actually brings out the flavor of the caviar mm -hmm. even more. This trio works together because you've got the doughiness of the blini, and then the dairy kind of cuts through and mellows out some of the salinity, but then lets that kind of unctuousness really mm -hmm. come through. And those three things, when they come together, it's magic. Okay. Golden Ocetra. Look at that. Ooh, yeah, they're larger, huh? These are the biggest beads, and you have this beautiful golden color, right. which is quite rare, and it tends to be a sign of a very kind of earthy, deep flavor. Oh my God. It's a tough day at the office, right? <laughs> now? Oh man. Mm. That's smooth. You just want to like lie down. That's elegant as <laughs> f Right. It's creamy too. Super you're, you're creamy, right? It's a nice right? creamy texture to it. The salt level's not too high. It's controlled. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you, it, you, it, it, the, still, it continues. It, it continues. Yeah. The flavor stays mm -hmm. with you. Mm. Yeah. This species mm -hmm. um, takes around 12 years to produce. So it's yeah. a big investment. Yeah. Well, when the, the producers presented to me caviar, I didn't want to do it at first because I didn't think it would show the respect to the caviar, you know, and it needs to be shown the respect because people take time. 12 years, seven years to, to put things in a, in a tin. It's, it's, it's such a, a pleasure to be able to taste the quality of these products, you know. Yeah, so after all this, I think I've learned so much that I can incorporate into my own dish. I would love for you to come by and try the dish when we come kind of put it together and then would love to hear your opinion on it. I would love that. I can't wait to see what you come up with. So after talking with Nikki, I had an opportunity to think about what I'm gonna do with my dish. I really enjoyed the paddlefish caviar and the latka because you would never associate caviar with greasy food because it's such a high-end item. But also, I really like cooking kind of this high-low uh, food style. So for people that uh, really are skeptical about trying caviar, uh, hopefully I can create a dish where they can uh, attach themselves to it and it can make caviar a little bit more approachable. Yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, head home sleep on this and then come back and, and let you know what kind of dish I came up with. After a day hanging out at Russ and Daughters with Nikki, I decided to make a New York classic with our own spin on it, a caviar bacon, egg, and cheese. Once I tasted the latke with a little bit of creme fraiche and the paddlefish caviar on there, that really gave me uh, an idea of kind of the nuances of caviar, but also at the same time, it, it was super nostalgic. The bacon, egg, and cheese 
kind of shares that greasiness, also shares that nostalgic feel. When I was eating the latke, you can really taste the caviar. So my main goal with creating this bacon, egg, and cheese is to always, always showcase the caviar, but also still have that greasy feeling and kind of the home feeling while you're eating a bacon, egg, and cheese. We're gonna substitute bacon with salmon bacon. We're also gonna make our own remoulade with caviar in it. We're also gonna make our own Kaiser roll. And inside the Kaiser roll, we're gonna put some caviar in it too. I know it's a little crazy, but we're gonna put caviar in it too. And then the topping of the Kaiser roll is also a little bit more caviar. And so it's gonna be caviar on caviar, man. You're gonna see it all. You have to start off, we're gonna go ahead and create our Kaiser roll. The Kaiser roll is such a famous roll here in New York. Every bodega has this roll and we create all our bacon, egg, and cheese sandwiches with it. So first, we're gonna have this great uh, new product. It's powdered dehydrated caviar. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pulse it. And we're gonna put this right into our mix of our dough, okay? Pulse it once, wait. We're gonna pulse it again, and then that's it. I still wanted to kind of see it inside the dough and I want it to have that coarse kind of look to it. All right, so next, we're gonna take our instant yeast, some sugar, some salt. We're just gonna go ahead and mix it with the AP flour. And then we're gonna go ahead and pour it in to our mixing bowl. One egg. Take half of it. I'm gonna save the other half for the egg wash later. Put butter in here also. One third cup of water. Do it slow. Let it incorporate a little bit. All right, awesome. Now you can tell that it's ready. It's when it comes off of the side of the bowl. It just comes off easy, just like that. And you can see all the speckles from the caviar. After you put the dough right into this bowl, it's greased. You can add a little uh, towel right over the top and you let it proof in a warm place for about an hour and a half. What happens when dough proofs is it doubles, uh, the yeast gets activated, and it also makes the inside a little bit more softer and a little bit more airy. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and punch it down. Yeah, the punching helps it bring down to its original size, and then we're gonna portion it from here. So I'm gonna cut it right in half. It's just gonna be two rolls, two nice rolls. And then what we're gonna do next is, we're gonna go ahead and stamp it with the Kaiser roll uh, cut on top. We're gonna go ahead and double proof these things, put in a warm place for about an hour, and then we'll come back to it. All right, and what we're gonna do next is, we have a little bit of the caviar powder left. We're gonna add this on top. And first, when I egg wash the whole dough itself, it's gonna really caramelize and create the nice golden brown color that you're looking for. So this is gonna be crispy on the outside, fluffy on the inside, just like me. So next, I'm gonna put some of this dehydrated caviar on top of this Kaiser roll to really kind of replicate the poppy seed look, but also at the same time, it's gonna push into the dough and create that nice extra crunch and texture that you're gonna need. So now we're gonna put it in the oven for 425 degrees at 15 minutes. Wow, look how beautiful these things came out. Golden brown, proof really nice. The poppy seeds that are caviar stayed on and they look great right on top of this thing. I like the way that it looks, that it makes it look like a roll that you've seen before in the grocery stores or in the bodega, but it's it's not. So next we're gonna create the, the remoulade. It's usually used for a lot of pole boys and stuff like that, Creole section of the South. Since I'm using salmon bacon for this dish, I think the remoulade will really go well with that. I like to like smash garlic to open it up. And we're gonna go ahead and just mince this. I'm gonna just crush it a little bit more. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and put in our mayo, horseradish, pickle juice, and a little bit of that smokiness. Cajun seasoning, okay? Pepper, a little salt, a couple of dashes of Tabasco. I'm gonna mix this first. This is a little bit of reminiscent of the creme fraiche. It has fattiness, a little bit of acidity to it. And we're gonna use the caviar as a seasoning agent for the whole thing. I decided to go with the paddlefish. Even though this is the least expensive one from the three that we tasted yesterday, I think this is the most approachable and also it really was strong. And that's what you kind of need with this dish. When you make that first bite, you want it to be a pop right into your mouth when you bite into it. So that's why I chose the paddlefish. Like I said, you want to treat this with respect, okay? You don't want to mush it. You want to like fold it. Taste. Oh, that worked. <laughs> you know, the, the remoulade flavor isn't right in front, right? But then the caviar 
the sea, the saltiness is right in the back. This thing is gonna create the layers that you need to really create a great sandwich. Now it's time to put the whole sandwich together. Oof, look at this, how beautiful this thing looks. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put some butter on the pan here. Oh yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and toast our Kaiser roll. I'm gonna do four pieces of salmon bacon per sandwich. This salmon bacon is made in Alaska, and it looked like they kind of emulsified some salmon meat and put some fat in it and then smoked it and cured it. It doesn't have the fattiness with regular bacon, but it does pour forward kind of the seafood taste that you need with this dish. We're gonna do a, a three egg situation here for this sandwich. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and take our salmon bacon off, add a little bit of chives. I'm gonna go ahead and put some cheese there. What I'm gonna do first is put banana ketchup in the bottom of the bun. I'm gonna go edge to edge, all right? It's key, just to cover it like that. And then, the remoulade. That looks good. All right next, we're gonna go ahead and put our salmon bacon, our eggs. <laughs> oh, shoot. It's, it's okay that it's messy. It's, uh, it's the style that we do here in New York, all right? And then next, we're gonna go ahead and put our caviar in. Yeah, buddy. And close it. Yeah. That's what you call a bacon egg and cheese right there. That's clean. Oh man. Look at that thing. <laughs> you can literally see the caviar right there. It's just oozing out. Oh man. Nice to smell it. Wow, caviar is definitely prominent. It's not like the caviar is hiding behind something or it's getting muddled by something else. It's the main attraction of this whole dish. Even the bread itself, you can taste the caviar in that, you know, like that oceany, salinity kind of flavor profile. The one thing that you can't really get around is the caviar is gonna be expensive. So if you do something like this, it should be for a special occasion, you know, the day after New Year's, a great hungover uh, a sandwich in the morning and you wanna feel still decadent from the night before, definitely do a salmon, bacon, egg, and cheese with caviar in the morning. This is for you. Oh my God, Harold. Look at this, the layers here and the caviar. It's like a rainbow in here. Yeah. Gorgeous. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> and, then, and then what is this on top? Those are all dehydrated uh, caviar and we just cooked it on top. That's, <laughs> that's so, so it's dope. Caviar that everywhere. is so, that's a, that's brilliant. I go ahead and take a bite. I, I would just go, said than done. go, go I in the corner, what's corner my the corner situation. The corner okay, situation. okay, yeah, I'm yeah. going on the corner. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. It's so good. Yeah. You know, yeah. looking at it, I thought it was gonna be really more like just in your face, mm -hmm. over the top. Mm -hmm. But it's not. It's mm -hmm. actually really delicate. Mm -hmm. And the paddlefish was a great choice on mm -hmm. your part, because I taste the caviar, but I also feel like I'm having these different layers mm -hmm. come through. This is just fun. It takes away any pretension. Yeah. Um, that shouldn't be there in the first place, sure. honestly. I'm glad you like it. We have I, different I, I ideas actually, too. I actually love it. Wherever you put this on the menu, I'm gonna <laughs> eat it. Or I'm gonna put notice. it on my menu. <laughs> <laughs> All right, like we always say, and bon appetit, never forget where you come from, otherwise you become a asshole. South Bronx all day, you already know. Peace.